I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Family, we are currently living in critical times and we must prepare for the arrival of the kingdom of Yah. Let's be watchmen of our Savior. You are now listening to Surviving the Last Days Podcast, a Bible-based podcast for kingdom preppers. Remnant of God, let's gather until that last trumpet sounds. Hey guys, welcome to Surviving the Last Days Podcast, and I am the one and only host, Ashley Shante. So we are here for a new episode, a new conversation, a new transfer of faults, and a new day above ground. We're about to go into the Sabbath this Friday, Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, so thankful to experience that and be able to use this holy day for prayer. That's what I think we should use the Sabbath for, um, prayer. Because a lot has been going on. Um, you know, we had the AT&T outage. Then there was some other kind of phone outage. Or no, it was Facebook and Instagram, I think, that was down. Which... I don't really have a use for Facebook these days or Instagram. I mean, I probably use Instagram a little bit more than Facebook because I have I have the um podcast page on Instagram. So I always post on there when I can. Um but maybe you guys heard about that and then some people say they have been experiencing power outages in my area because I had a friend that texted me this morning and he was like did your lights go out I'm like well I don't know because I was sleeping through the night it was raining all through the night so I didn't see any lights go out but he said something about power outages so there's been things that have been happening like back to back um I want to talk to you guys about understanding the matrix and you know living in this matrix basically the matrix is if I could describe it in my own words it's a separate dimension from what we may consider heaven Um, it's a separate dimension from what's below the ground possibly whatever is below the ground Um, below the earth the matrix is a system a system of policies rules man-made culture why does everybody do the same thing in the matrix because that's what the matrix was molded to do is create the same type of people doing the same type of things the matrix is like a Henry Ford automobile plant. It puts things in place and people in place to follow a trail. And everyone that is born in this earth gets off that conveyor belt and is pushed into the matrix. That means we go through the public school system I mean, you may have had a parent that was defiant and decided to homeschool you or had the money and and the privilege to send you to a private school, which doesn't really follow governmental laws. But for a majority of us, we were put in public schools, believed, you know, our parents believed in education in the public schools. Um, But the public schools then train us to be workers 
and uh, train us to be one band, one sound, if you will. Um, everybody sit down at the desk at the same time. Everybody read at the same time. Everybody study the same thing at the same time. Um, everyone goes to school Monday through Friday and off Saturday and Sunday, just like work day. Um, so we get out of school for 12 years of public school. And where do we go? Either workforce, military, college, prison, um, college, we know that that causes a lot of debt, a lot of financial debt. We're not taught anything throughout all of our life unless we were privileged enough to have parents tell us the original way that Yahweh wanted us to live. But if we didn't have that knowledge and our parents didn't have that knowledge, the matrix taught us how to live. And how does the matrix have us living today, folks? We're working our nine to fives for long periods of time. We're trying to stack up some funds if we can in a 401k, if we even have a 401k. You know, um, we may be trying to we may be trying to put some little coins back in our savings account if we can, because statistics say the average American doesn't even have a thousand dollars in the bank. And as we know, if you've been paying attention to the news, a lot of banks have been closing, and banks don't seem very appealing these days unless it's an online bank and usually online banks have a higher annual percentage yield meaning a higher uh, interest rate that they will add to your money if your money is sitting in an account with them online banks I noticed they have a, a high annual percentage rate um, so I mean if you have $500 just sitting in their bank account for long periods of time they have a, maybe a, a yearly uh, interest rate Well, where they'll put like uh, their interest rate maybe like 4% or 5%. They'll put 4% of what you already saved extra in your account, if that makes sense. So, But regular banks have high yield savings account and they have a decent interest rate too. Um, just don't open a regular savings, ask for a high yield savings to get that additional income added on. But um, back to the topic, uh, the Matrix got us working, not even the jobs that we wanted. <laughs> the Matrix got us working, not even the jobs that we wanted. You know, um, it's, uh, I don't know. I used. I remember when I was in high school, I told my high school counselor that I wanted to be a film director or a cinematographer. I never knew that there were so many principles and policies and, and and systematic things in place against me that I would never be able to become that. Um, that sounds very harsh, but. A lot of times people think, oh, I didn't become this because of my own fault. No, that's not the case. I'm a firm believer that the matrix is the reason why a lot of people don't become who they are, who they supposed to be. Um, the way Yah originally set up the system to be on earth, we would have been able to have free will to do whatever we wanted to do. Um, because, because, um, let me see. I'm trying to send somebody a message, guys. Hold on.
Um, but back to what I was saying, the matrix um, even teaches us that, oh, you're not becoming what you need. You're not becoming, you don't have the willpower to become um, what you wanted to become because it's your fault. No, no, it's not. The reason why a lot of people end up in situations like homelessness and poverty and job um, a bit of job firing, you know, people have experienced job firing and unemployment and disability. It's because the matrix puts us in these these situations. Um, the matrix give us not so good food that causes health problems. The matrix um, make us work jobs that are highly stressful for little money. Like you could work at an $8 billion company and they only pay you $17 an hour. Um, That's nothing to live off of these days because as we know, the average rent price in America is over $2,000. So, I'm saying all this, guys, to say that you have all these aspirations and these goals and you're still sending your kids to college and you're still telling them to chase after this job and that job. Um, Did you know in the original beginning, Adam and Eve were never given jobs? They weren't supposed to have them because they were supposed to have dominion over the earth. Of course, now we're in the matrix So we have to go by the powers that be and what they say we ought to do to survive here. You know, we have to play their game, right? But you don't have to play it to the T like that. Once you figure it out that that, that there's this system is broken and temporary, you don't have to play it to the T like that. You don't have to keep sending your kids to these colleges that getting them hundred thousand dollars in debt. You know, um, if you manage to put your kid through college without it and they get a scholarship, well, fine, let them go. It's free education. But if you only want to put them through college for a job and when they get out of college, a hundred thousand, even if they get a degree where they make a hundred thousand a year salary, all of their salary is going to have to go toward their student loans. <laughs> and these days in the United States of America, a hundred thousand with bills and everything and car notes and health care, medical insurance, dental insurance and shall I go on? I mean, hundred thousand can really dwindle really fast right behind right before your eyes. So can we still live well in this system? Yes, we can. We can, we can, like I said, we can play their game. We can go to our jobs as long as we can tolerate them and we can get our money and survive that way. Or you can step away from the matrix. I, that's, that's ultimately what I believe is the best decision to prepare to step away from the matrix If you are a person who has come to the conclusion that you want to spend a lot of time studying your Bible, you want to spend a lot of time raising your children, you want to spend a lot of time loving on your family and your spouse, you don't really want to spend a lot of time working for a check. You know, you don't really want to spend a lot of time at work when you could be exercising or doing you know, some type of breathing exercise or yoga, and you want time to yourself, right? You don't want to live your life around a clock, but around a compass, if you will. Want to be able to travel where you want to go, wherever you want to go, whenever you want to go. But you have to be glued to a desk or a floor because you're working for a check, And people always say, well, how is it possible to get out the matrix? It's so hard to get out the matrix. Really, a lot of people are desperately joining ways to make income other than the nine to five. Because now you kind of almost are forced to because the nine to five is not enough. The nine to five alone is not enough. 
So people are running to eBay to become eBay sellers and Amazon to become Amazon sellers and making their own creative soaps and hair conditioners and and people are becoming farmers to grow their own food because of food inflation or sell food. Amen. People are becoming more self-sufficient and learning to wean themselves from the matrix because the matrix is crashing on us right before our eyes. We're forced to get out of the matrix. Really? We're forced to make our own way because the matrix isn't giving us enough these days. You know, back in the 70s, maybe even before then, you could get a high school diploma, go apply to a steel mill if you're a guy, go apply to nursing school if you're a woman, and you can have a decent middle-class family life. Now, there is no middle class. Now, leaning on that American dollar is killing us. Now, our best bet to live in this matrix is to just get out of it all together. That means let the paycheck go. That means let that mortgage go. Let that car note go. Let debt go. I mean, after all, our our father in heaven said the borrower is a slave to the lender. So that means we were never supposed to become borrowers. Well, how would we get a house, Ashley? If I don't become a borrower, how would I get a car? You could have saved up your own money and every every that car note amount that you're paying every month, you could have put that every month in your bank account until you got the total amount of what the car was. And gave it to them in cash. You were you 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 never. We were never supposed to be borrowers. So what does that mean? You have to leave the matrix, and you have to leave your mind that your old mind that you had in the matrix. Or you can stay glued to your desk or glued to that work floor, and continue riding out the matrix until. It, it, it just leaves you, you hopeless and your dreams deferred. I remember Langston Hughes had a poem. What happens to a dream deferred? Let's read that. I love Langston Hughes. I'm a poet at heart. And um, I've published a poetry book, ebook, uh, called Black Girl T- Tears on uh, Kindle. You guys can look that up if you want to by Ashley Shante, me. Um, But Langston Hughes, let's look it up. Look up that poem. What happens to a dream deferred? Um... It's a really, it's kind of a longer poem, you know, it's a long poem, but I'm not going to read, I'm just going to read that first half. Because I think there's more to this poem. But anyway, it says, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? So he's writing this during a time period of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, And he wants to know what happens to a man. And you guys probably seen the the play, uh, the stage play by Angela Lansbury, Raising in the Sun. Um, Kind of written about a man who's trying to you know, open up a business and then got his money scammed from him. And he tried so hard to do so many things to escape the matrix. And it was just a, such a defeat for him. So, but Langston's poem says what happens um, to a dream deferred. And here in the matrix, our dreams all always get deferred because we're always thinking about, well, I got to put food on the table. We can't put food on the table. Um, let me see some. We can put food on a table if we originally go back to our roots and start gardening. We can we can make our we can make a garden of fruits 
and vegetables. We Then we can put food on the table anytime we want to because we can stock up on our harvest after we planted the seeds. You reap what you sow, the scripture says. Time period. Okay, so I'm looking up the time period of the Renaissance because Langston Hughes was a part of this time period. Um, it was the, I think they call it the Harlem Renaissance. And it was a period where it was full of jazz musicians, uh, specifically African American uh, artists, uh, sculptural sculpture people, artists, painters. It was from the 1910s and or early 1920s. And Langston Hughes was a member of that era, and he wrote that poem, um, you know, a dream deferred. So the matrix kind of programs you or indoctrinates you to believe um, that you can't live a natural free life unless you're doing what they want you to do, which is work in these corporations, these man-made corporations, depend on these man-made grocery stores and processed foods. The Matrix robbed us of what we originally knew how to do, which was grow food, uh, plant a garden, um, depend on the the garden to feed us. Um, There was a time period when we didn't work away from home. Uh, The men... And women and children worked on the land, worked on the farm. Um, And whatever that farm produced took care of them, whether it be coconut oil, whether it be a coconut to make coconut oil for frying or for skin or for teeth. Um, We every all the natural resources that came from the ground, we were able to use for several different things. We could build our own homes. There used to be men who didn't have to pay a bank for a mortgage. They could go out and buy some land and build their own home from the ground up. They didn't need to call nobody because they knew how to build. They don't teach men that stuff in school no more. They don't teach you how to build a home from the ground. They should. It's very important because you know why they don't teach you? Because they want you to depend on their man-made banking system. They want you to go to the banks to get you a builder for your home so they can tax you on land that you own every year. This matrix has really caused a lot of people to feel run down from working, overworking, and underpaid. If rent is $2,000, why are they still paying people $14 an hour, $17 an hour? And if you manage to get in that percentile bracket, that's $25 an hour, $30 an hour, $90 an hour. But you still got to trade in every bit of your energy and every bit of your time and maybe even work overtime. Then you're still in the matrix, sis. You're still in the matrix, brother. You're just a higher paid matrix worker. You know, there is such thing as high paid wage slavery, higher paid wage slavery, but it's all wage slavery. Anytime you got to trade in your time, your energy, and your attention for money, yeah, you're tied to wages. But if you can go to sleep, wake up, and you're still getting paid, and money is still cash flowing in your bank account, but you're not even being no at no specific space to earn it, you have reached another form of living that to me is an amazing way to live where you don't have to work for money, but money works for you. You know, if we're having to associate with money in this matrix, at least we should be thriving or striving to make it work for us and not we work for it. You know, that means by Becoming an owner of something, 
and not letting people get in your ear to discourage you and say, oh, you can't do that. That's that's impossible. That's not realistic. Well, you know what? I'd rather think unrealistic than think realistic, than think my reality is me working until I'm 65 years old and never being able to afford um, a, a life of freedom, you know, but you work all these years until you're 65 have to get on social security disability, drain your little retirement fund to try to have some type of enjoyment, even though now you're old and have all these aches and pains that come out of nowhere because we are not at the full capacity that we would be when we were younger. I don't think I don't think I want that life. I think I want the life that Yah originally intended for us to have as his children. Um that's just my opinion, guys. Um, I don't want a life where uh, where you're slaving away for coins. And then as soon as you get the coins, you can't even buy your nice outfit that you want, your nice purse that you want. And hopefully to God that you have a family that will get you the things that you can't get yourself. I'm going to tell y'all something about this matrix, especially this time period that we're in now, which is the last days of the matrix. There is no more. I'm in my own house. He in her own house. She in her own house. There is no more of that. Now is the time. Sorry about that, guys. Now is the time where people are living with each other. Not just boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm talking about people are going back to their mother's house, going back to their sister's home. You People are cash apping each other, making sure each other have things. Um, everybody's working, helping each other out. As is originally supposed to be, you we're always supposed to be interdependent and help each other out. But you know, in this matrix, for a long period of time, people was able to have one family member. People was able to have one family here in a two-story house and another family in the projects. That used to be a thing, right? Now, it's no more of that. Everybody is in the same boat. It's no more different middle, it's no more different social classes. Either a have and a have not. It's either your family have or they have not. If they have not, everybody's everybody's coming together now. Gone are the days where you had your own apartment, right? Gone are the days when everybody wants to live on their own, be grown. Uh, now we're all coming together, piling up at each other's house. You got multiple people staying in one place. Not everybody has their own space. If you are in a family where all your friends have their own space and they completely living on their own, that's a blessing. But majority of people in the Matrix, they are starting to live with other people. They live with other family members. People are starting to cash up each other regularly um, to make sure each other have what they need. Um, people are starting to come together and trying to be a support system as a whole for one another because inflation is high on food. Okay. Um, individual households now is very damaging because all of the little funds you get from your job, is going to be used up all on rent and bills. So, People are coming under the roof of their family members trying to live a sustainable life because the matrix has really crashed on us. You know, if you're married, you're you're staying together, you know, and trying to survive together. Um, maybe you might, maybe some married couples might have um, a little bit of wiggle room to help others outside of their household. Um, but for the majority of part, the matrix is set up like haves, the haves, and the haves-nots. 
So you might be thinking, man, I'm doing bad in this matrix. You're not doing bad. You're doing exactly what the matrix has set up for you to do, which was crash and freaking burn and make the rich rich wealthier. And there's nothing against the rich or the wealthy or capitalists. Um, Nothing against them. It's just that it's highly disproportionate. It's uneven. The wealth in America is uneven, especially black wealth. Um, And I don't really think as believers that we should chase a bag or money or wealth at all because we know by the book of revelations that wealth won't be anything that you can have somebody like oprah be begging for food because she got all the money in the world but she ain't gonna be able to go in the grocery store unless she take the mark of the beast because money paper money won't be worth anything so she'll be the one crying to the farmer to let her live off the land and eat even though she got a billion dollars worth of paper in the bank because money will soon not be worth anything okay so surviving the last days and living in this matrix we really kind of got to stand 10 toes down and, and go against the grain and do something we never did before to break free because if we don't break free we're going to get distracted from our course that we're supposed to be on spiritually and we're never going to be set free and we're always going to feel uh stagnant and we're always going to feel um stuck and we're always going to feel like we can't set ourselves free when you were born free and freedom is your birthright you were born literally free you got involved in the matrix and submerge yourself in the matrix systems, their banking systems, their voting political systems, their governmental systems, their public school systems, their corporate company systems, and a lot of other systems in place by this man-made matrix. But you could get out of it. And as believers of the Most High God, Yahweh, Yara, which means the Lord will provide, we have no choice but to escape the matrix. And if you truly are, to me, a remnant of God or chosen one, you're already experiencing pushback from the matrix. You've probably already been kicked out of the matrix. I mean, uh, most of us, have been kicked out of the matrix all the way anyway. Um, Maybe something is happening spiritually that we can't see where we're being removed from certain family structures and relationships and friendships and, and, and um, job positions because we've been kicked out of the matrix. Um, But if you want truly uh, uh, what they call a reliable um, resources if you truly want reliable resources it's not a paycheck it's not a car note it's not a mortgage um, That it's a lady that I saw on the media that left the matrix she's living a free life she to in order to do that she had to leave her life behind that means her mortgage she sold her house she downgraded her car um she lives and travels wherever she wants to visits all kind of islands eats all kind of good food um you know and she makes i guess she makes money by blogging her adventures um but she's not dependent on money because she don't live a life that requires money she don't have like a mortgage bill or a car note. She's set free. She's out of debt. Like, and any cash flow she has is from maybe blogging. Um, how does she get her blog to make money? She she probably had a little bit of marketing knowledge and had a little bit of promotional knowledge and know who to target, know her audience and. You know, things like that. But it can happen. You can grind it out. 
you know, just like we grind it out on these jobs and we make sure we come because the job is a regular paycheck, right? But if you have your own brand and your own business, it's, it's, it's a little bit irregular because you don't know everything you're doing. Because a lot of us aren't born with that wisdom for marketing and advertising and knowing who we're supposed to go to and knowing how we're supposed to, you know, bring awareness to our business. We don't know all that stuff, which is why you can try to find a mentor that's already doing it to help you out, you know, to shave something off, shave some years off the learning curve. Um, But even if you do got to go through all that, it's worth it. It's way more worth it than spending the rest of your life at a job and feeling confined and stuck and stagnant. The feeling of the feeling of not being able to move when you want to move is a horrible feeling. It's like being trapped in a body or buried alive. Being trapped in your body and can't move but you can see everything, feel everything, hear everything, but you can't move. It's like being buried alive. What is, what does liberty mean? I think liberty means free will to do as you please and not be judged for it and not be called crazy and not be called, you know, not normal. How is it not normal to be set free, but it's normal to be confined to a job and depending on a job to pay your bills and the job can say no we don't want you here anymore at any time how's that more smarter to do and no offense to people who like their job and want to work a nine to five and very tolerable and enjoy coming that's they thought they occupy their time and their mind and if it helps you in that therapeutic way kudos you know But for most of us, a nine to five is a dreadful place to be, especially when we want to live our life in the presence of the most high all the time. And we want to live our life being free to travel with our children whenever we want to and being able to kiss our hug our kids when they come home and being able to to not be um, limited with how much money we can make, but make as much money as we want to make. You know, there are people who make sculptures um, and they get paid a thousand dollars per sculpture. Whereas if they gave up their gift and went to a job, they would be on the hourly pay doing some phone work. You know, it's like you might as well use your gift and try to figure out ways to make money off of it in addition to your job. Because honestly, you have to. The Matrix isn't cutting it all the way like it used to. So but ultimately, you know, my my thing is you should leave the matrix all together. That's what I think. It is so dull outside here. It's so rainy today. I'm going to have a sip of my ginger elderberry hot steam water. But yeah. The Matrix isn't cutting it. The Matrix might used to be a decent thing or feel like some the right thing to do. These days, guys, it ain't that much so. Let me take a quick break real real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So how do we, as believers of God, as followers of Christ, how do we survive in this matrix without nine to five paycheck? Um, well, you can do gig work like DoorDash, Instacart, Uber Eats, and stack up the earnings you receive from those apps. If you are able to, or 
you can take your money from work and invest in buying land or growing food at some point um, so you can depend more on your garden than money price than food prices um, you can be self-employed and send your resume like let's say if you're an office cleaner you're self-employed send your resume to different psychologists office lawyer offices real estate offices and tell them your prices and that you're an office cleaner and work for yourself that way you know like you send in a resume to a job or how you submit resumes online at indeed.com you can submit your resumes as a self-employed office cleaner or self-employed hairdresser or self-employed whatever you do submit your resume to your potential clients and even if it's podcasting like I wouldn't submit a resume but what we would submit as podcasters or YouTubers or influencers we would submit a proposal for sponsorship so we would do something like you know letting people know where our podcasts or video streams are um are located what apps they're on uh we would tell them our statistics um and our fees for sponsorship so that's what we would send as um i guess what you would call more for podcasters youtubers influencers we would send businesses proposals instead of resumes but if you are in a service-based position you are a virtual assistant you are office cleaner a church cleaner um you because cleaning there's a lot of money to be made within that business alone you are a private duty cna or a private duty nurse you would send your resume directly to the client that you want to work for and they would pay you either through physical cash or cash app and you just stack your money up and save your money and save partial of your money for um, self-employed taxes that you have to pay. Um, but basically, self-employment can get you out the matrix. So you won't be working by somebody else's schedule. They tell you when to go to the bathroom. They give you a 30-minute lunch break or an hour lunch break. They give you two 15-minute breaks. But if you're self-employed, uh, you get to set your own schedule and how many hours you work in a day. You get to set your own breaks. Um, you know, if you're a mechanic or a barber, you can do that stuff, you know. Um, self-employment is, is is a way to get out the matrix, and then if you want to move forward and become a business owner and become an LLC, then you can hire un- other people under you if that's what you you want to do. Um, and then if you even want to move forward from that and sell your business and become just strictly an investor and make money from other people's businesses and hard work and let your money be invested in their hard or hard work and makes you back money. So that's how you get out of the matrix too, by becoming an investor. You never get out of the matrix by becoming a money saver. I know that people have preached over the years, save money, save money. But as we know, the U.S. dollar is dwindling and saving it while it's depreciating won't do us any good. In fact, we don't need it to sit around. We need it to go to work. <laughs> so we won't have to go to work. So we need to put it and tie it up in investments. If that investment is land, that's a good thing. You can live off that land. You can build on that land. You can grow food on that land. If it's tied up in um, real estate, that's a good thing too. Because you can either live in it or you can either rent it out or sell it. Um, there are people that flip homes for a living. They buy a home, they fix it up, and they sell it. 
Uh, you can flip items on eBay. You know, you buy something in your local home goods department or office. Uh, de- or what is it called? Um, Hobby Lobby s- store. And you find it really cute and you find little knickknack things and you put them on eBay and you flip it. You know, there there is flipping uh, businesses out here. People flip sneakers all the time um, on eBay. Um, so there are several ways you can get out of the matrix. Maybe I should have named maybe I should have named this podcast several ways to get out of the matrix. <laughs> Why don't I just go ahead and name it several ways to get out of the matrix? I think I'll do that because I'm really giving y'all ways to get out of the matrix. And it really does take a lot of a lot of mind set renewing. Because you really have to program your unprogram yourself from the matrix and from the dependency of what you think a paycheck is. So we think paycheck is more dependable, but in reality, it's actually not because it's based on if another person approves of our the way we work and the way we do things. It's based on a, another person's quality assurance of our work, which could be in their own opinion on any given day. So it's not good to be dependent on something like that. So ways to leave the matrix would become, would be becoming self-employed with what you know how to do. Um, If you know how to paint, sell picture frames or posters. Um, If you know how to do digital art, you know, sell the covers, um, to book authors and make book author covers, you know, um, if, like I said, if you know how to paint, you can sell your, your portraits to banks and, um, different businesses and offices that like art decor in their, um, office space. Um, you, if you know how to design something like some people design, jewelry and they make a living off of it. I know I've tried to design handmade jewelry but I wasn't really able to to market it as like as much as I would like to because I'm not I don't know how to market that like some people might be good at marketing jewelry I just didn't know how to market it like I was supposed to um it's whatever you're really really great at basically I'm really really great at podcasting I love podcasting so I have more wisdom on that on how to market and promote that um, you, if you are a writer, um, you can write books. You know, a lot of people do make side hustle income from writing books and stacking up their income that way. Um, of course, you know, to go into transition into these type, this self-employment type of field, if you don't have a, um, a money cushion to live off of for a few months until you get everything off the ground, you might have to downgrade and live with somebody uh, to start your self-employment journey. Um, and it's worth it to do if you have someone you can trust to to live with. You know, you might have to downsize and downgrade to start a life journey of freedom. Um or to start your new entrepreneur journey or your new self-employment journey. Um, Another way to leave the matrix is, like I said, by living off the land. Um, If you already have land that you own or rent, you can start growing on that land. And once your harvest has sprouted up, you can gather it up and can your vegetables and your fruits if you want and harvest it or store it in a, you know, store it in, if you have multiple refrigerators, multiple freezers, you can store it. I know that Kelly, one of the singer has a farm and she makes all type of products from her farm. And she does that like on a regular basis now, more than her music. It's pretty dope. She makes all kinds of skin products, hair products. She's really a free woman at this point. Um, because she's not dependent on a concert bag. Oh, I got to make this concert so I can get this money. I got to go here, up here and perform and sweat and dance and sing my heart out. No, she living off the land. 
she's living off the land. But if you do want to be a singer, nothing wrong with that. You could be a self-employed singer. And if you want to put in that sweat, blood, and tears, and that 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 is something you want to do, it doesn't bother you, you make your bag and you go home. But ultimately, um, to leave the matrix, you have to have ownership of your skill. If you are giving your skill to a job company or whatever and making that company rich off of the skill you have, um, why not use your skill to make your own self some money, you know? Um, and some people might say, well, I don't have a talent. I don't have a skill. Everybody has a natural gifted talent and everybody has some type of skill that they don't know about that they're good at that hasn't been brought out of them yet you know you just have to really discover yourself uh to figure that out um but yes definitely living off the land is a way to get out of the matrix being self-employment in a number of different fields can get you out of the matrix I mean, there are people who clean people's house, personal homes, and they are self-employed. There are people who do, you know, nursing assistance or, or um, what they call home health aid. I know you can work for a company being a home health aid, but you can also be self-employed home health aid. Um, there are people who clean teeth. They are aestheticians, and they went to school to be an aesthetician, but they clean people's teeth or they may they may do people's skin um people there are people that do lashes they that's all they do is eyelashes there are people that do makeup I know there's a girl that I saw on YouTube she was living in Atlanta and she moved there so she for her makeup business because she does people makeup and she was able to stack up so much money in Atlanta because she networked and she was able to hit the pavement and knew how to market herself. It's all, it's really all about knowing how to market yourself. If you're willing to work hard for yourself, like you work hard for that job, then you'll be okay. You know, if you know how to market yourself and hustle, uh, you'll get the clients that you, that you want, you know? And she was able to get a lot of clients by doing makeup and she was able to stack her money. Now, after you figure out how to market yourself and market your skill, you do have to be careful with that money management. I mean, we're not that good at it now with the paycheck to paycheck life life cycle, but you really got to be good at it when you are making it on demand. When you're making money on demand like that, you really have to manage or govern yourself and say, you know what? I'm not going to touch this money for a week. Maybe you can pay yourself every week, or I'm not going to touch this money until two weeks. You can pay yourself every two weeks like a job if you want to. Um, but you definitely got to be able to budget um, and manage your money because it can get out of hand once you get that. Once you tap into the feeling of making money on demand, uh, you could become like a really big spender because you're like, I make it back right quick. But, you know, you still want to try to be um, good, good at money managing still, you know, because you because, you know, with the paycheck to paycheck life cycle, you really can't manage it much because your your salary is kind of limited, you know. And jobs don't be giving raises these days. But um, when you're making money on your own terms, um, and you're making as much money as you're willing to make because as much like as a makeup artist as many faces as she want to make up, she get paid. You decide how much you want to get paid, and it can become quite addicting. And you can kind of splurge, you know, feel the need to splurge, but you still need to have some, like, money management. But I feel like the Matrix kind of kills our fire and kind of blows out our flame. But hopefully this podcast episode will boost your flame back up or relight your flame to go after what you want and put yourself out there again, just like you put yourself out there for a job submitting resumes put yourself out there and submit resumes to clients that you want to work with or work for you know and they'll be your client and pay you um and they you know you do a service for them and then they pay you
I think that's the best form of freedom is to be able to make your own money at your own terms, you know? And people, you know, will say, especially the ones who really advocate for nine to five, they'll say, well, you can get fired being a self-employed person. That's true. But when you're self-employed and you're making your own moves, it's like your destiny is in your hands. When you're an employee and you get fired, it's like your destiny is not in your hands because now you got to wait on the mercy of another company to pick you up. But self-employment, you really, it's not up to you to wait. Like you can, um, you can find a client anywhere, you know, more when you're waiting on corporations, it's a process to go through. They got an interview process. Some, some companies make you go through four or five interviews, you know, when you're self-employed and you're just trying to, to clean an office, you know, or dog sit or house sit, you know, you just submit your, your resume to your client and they hire you or not. You ain't really got to jump through so many hoops, you know? You ain't got to jump through that many hoops. At least that's the way I'm seeing it. I don't know. Let me take another break, guys. Hold on. I get some uh, sponsors because I'll have sponsors to play when I want to go take a break. <laughs> yep, that'll be good. So if you have a business, um, I am accepting applications, sponsor applications. So if you want to sponsor my podcast, that'd be awesome because I could um, promote your business on my podcast. And that will be great, great, great. Uh, you can go ahead and visit link 
Tree slash Ashley Shante, and that's L I N K K dot. No, it's L I N K T R dot E E slash Ashley Shante, S H A N T E. So, yeah, that's where you will see all of my links the link to email me, the podcast website link. Because the podcast has a website too, guys. Uh, it's a really nice website. I think I created it for the podcast. And uh, the podcast has a direct link to um, the platform that, that I record off of. Even though you can get my podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple, uh, Google Play, Amazon Music, Audible. You can find my podcast on all those platforms. You really can, uh, but I just share one link on that website. So, yeah, visit L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Ashley Shante, S-H-A-N-T-E, and you will see all of the links that are pertaining to the podcast. You'll see my lovely website. You'll see the listening link. Uh, you'll see the email to, to uh, email me, and you'll see the cash app link to cash up your your fee if you want sponsorship so um take a look at that guys i would greatly appreciate it so on this friday i do hope that you guys get a chance to have some time to yourself I don't know, some, some people might have some big plans for the weekend, you know, getting out and enjoying themselves, I guess. Some people might have some spiritual plans, Sabbath plans, and that's okay, too. I have plans for rest. That's all I want is rest this weekend. I had to take some coconut water. But yes, all I want is rest this weekend, guys. Because the Matrix tires you out. You know, the Matrix, you, you constantly having to decipher uh, what is real. And what is fake? And um, this it can get tiring just thinking about everything in this matrix, you know. So that's why I I want to use my high holy Sabbath day on rest. Yes, indeed, just resting it up. You know, rest heals your body too. It heals your body. When you rest up, it heals your body. And a lot of us don't get a lot of rest because, you know, we work so much, you know. And it's crazy when you, you're you in a system where you work so much and it still end up not being, making, you know, enough. It still don't end up being enough. It's crazy. But that's how it is. It's a hamster wheel. That's how it is. It's it's really crazy, guys. The Matrix has really, really got us on this hamster wheel. And we got to fight to get off. I think I can do live episodes, too, when I, if I get on my laptop and I'll be able to chat with you guys um I can also do live in episodes on Instagram too that's another thing I can do live episodes on Instagram I think or YouTube or YouTube I can do live ep- I can yeah I can do live episodes on YouTube because I can go live on YouTube and uh, 
you guys could meet me on YouTube for live uh, sessions. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing that. But for the most part, guys, um, that's all I wanted to leave you with. I thank you for tuning into this episode today. You guys try to enjoy this Sabbath. Don't worry about things that you cannot control. Um, it's not your fault. Most of it ain't. You know, you just happen to be in front of the stray bullet that was going, you know. And we just got to make it through and navigate, you know. But I will catch you guys later. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Family, we are currently living in critical times and we must prepare for the arrival of the kingdom of Yah. Let's be watchmen of our Savior. You are now listening to Surviving the Last Days Podcast, a Bible-based podcast for kingdom preppers. Remnant of God, let's gather until that last trumpet sounds.